What up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to talk about three ways in which you can unit test React components specifically, not Redux, not the router, just the actual visual components, particularly a form. And there are three ways that I found using Enzyme to do it, and I wanted to show you today how to do that and some of my opinions behind it. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Warden. We have a really simple form here. It's just a sign up form with some basic validations. And if you don't type anything, you blur out, for example, it'll give you some validation errors. If you try to trick it and give it empty, it'll run each validation on those fields, but it only runs once you've tabbed away or tabbed in it and tabbed away. It doesn't run until that happens. So we're gonna fill out a basic username here and a basic email and a password, make it about 14 characters or so. And then once we do that, you're good to go. You can hit cement here. It'll go to the local server I have and signup's complete. And if you would like, you can reset. And I have a local server here. So the ad is actually going to a backend server. So that's where all this JSON's going and hashing the password. So pretty basic standard React form. It's not using Redux, but it is using router for that. And the component itself is pretty smart. So it's a managed component. There's no multiple components other than the loading dialog and the resubmit screen that I showed you. So let's take a look at the code. Three ways we're gonna talk about side effects first. Then we're gonna talk about making your classes a little bit more pure to test. And then we'll talk about more functional programming way of doing it with you pure functions that are curried by default. So here I've got in this uh, code that I've had on GitHub here, I've got the API, which is just a really simple Restify server that you can click add, you can see it, and about two seconds later, it'll say, hey, I, it worked. So that way you can actually test with the real server and deal with the latency aspects and asynchronous aspects very early on. And then in, in the UI itself, it's just a simple create React app that has all the standard stuff in play. We're specifically concerned with the add user and the add user test. And so let's take a walk through the code real quick. The add user is a simple managed component. So there's no Redux around it, but it is managing state. And if you scroll to the bottom here, you'll notice that it just exports out that component class of React. And if we scroll to the top here, we've got a bunch of methods and default state that the component is managing because it's dealing with the form. Clean just really means you haven't touched any field at all. It's starting fresh from Manila states on there. If you're signing up, if you're editing, loading, waiting for the server to see if you liked it or you're in error state or you're successful. And then the default properties that we care about. Everything else is a bunch of validation functions and change functions to set the internal state of the form as well as remember what it is. So if you go elsewhere and come back, you don't have to retype the things in again, as well as validation. So I'm using Folktail and Lodash for validations to verify your data is legit. And once we submit it off, it just goes to the localhost folder using fetch, which is a polyfill for, for fetch called crossfetch. And in the predicates, these are all the, the one-line functions to verify that the data is legit. So these are really, really simple to unit test. And some of the test coverage is already in there because we've tested the public. So a lot of these get unit tested for free. The validators use those predicates to create folktail validators so I can use all these things to identify what part of the data is not good and show some nice feedback to the user as well as multiples. It adds these arrays together, these errors together, so you can have multiple errors for a particular field. And so I've written them that it's okay to be shown to the user rather than just the developer. We have some really basic stateless components here where it's just a circular progress with the state. So when you're loading, this is really, really simple stuff. And these are really easy in unit tests because you can just call the function, verify the DOM's legit. Same thing for the successful signup, although it has some interactivity, it's just, let you go back to where you were. Really simple stuff. So we're gonna focus on unit testing the ad user. And what we wanna do is tackle some of the coverage things that we have here. Let me show you. Specifically around, if we go to add user and scroll down here a bit, what we're gonna to tackle today is the username on blur. 